Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Moe K Swedish Whiskey Girl. Today I'm here with Buna Haven 25. I don't actually know if I've tried this before, but I'm very excited to give it a go. It is bottled at 46.3% EBV, it's natural colour, non gel filtered, and of course from Buna Haven, which is a distillery on the island of Isla, which I'm sure most of you know already. But Isla is, of course, known for having a lot of distilleries that focus on peated whiskies, but Buna Haven tends to do a more of an unpeated style. And yes, it is expensive. It sits at £375, I think. But yeah, price is subjective. It depends if you think that's expensive or not. It is expensive to me, um, but it's great to be able to try a little sample of it. And I'll soon be comparing this one to the rest of the range. So we'll see which one's actually worth the box. I got a lot of response on my previous review of the 18. Some of you had it as their favourite. Some said go for the 12 instead because it's a better price and it's great flavour as well. So I'll be very excited to try these next to each other and see what I think. So make sure you, you like this video, of course, if you like it, uh, and subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. But we're gonna have a look on this whiskey and I think it's one that they describe as their most sherry influenced whiskey. Uh, so yeah, let's have a little look. Oh, it's just oh, so nice on the nose. It's, uh, it really is. It's big but so well rounded. It's like golden toffee, the newly like oiled and really soft leather, a little bit like a fruity perfume, something with maybe some pear notes in it. A bit of like a honeydew melon fruitiness as well. And something super sweet. But what I find with this one is that it's very, very fruity on the nose. Like vanilla pears, probably. A little bit also reminds me of, like it's a little bit powdery or almost like dusty. So maybe like dusty leather books. But I mean, oh. It makes me a little bit happy, but also a little bit sad that this nose is so nice. Um, I'll just have to buy another sample, probably. <sighs> yeah, it's just so fruity. It's um, a very well-rounded fruitiness that I tend to find with a lot of older whiskies. It doesn't have a lot of maltiness, doesn't have any smoke. But it's sometimes, it just, I don't know if you'll agree with me, but I find sometimes when you get the chance to nose and taste an older Isla whiskey, they have some sort of dense note about them and they're just so big, but well-rounded and just full of flavour and full of super interesting flavour. It's almost like unpeated, I mean peated as well, but specifically unpeated older Isla whiskies. They have something magical around them. I don't know, I just, I get so mesmerized by them. Um, yeah, <laughs> maybe we should try it. Slunge of air. I mean, it's stunning on the palette. It is that kind of same rounded fruitiness. You notice the, the woodiness a little bit more because it has this kind of drying sensation, but it's like really fresh wood that goes really well with this kind of fruitiness. Or not fresh wood, but more like clean wood. It has a slightly drying sensation on your tongue, but it's almost like it's needed because everything else would just be a little bit flat without the wood because it would just be almost too sweet and too fruity and quite one dimensional. It was only that, but with the woodiness, it makes it more interesting. 
It gives it another texture, I think, as well, because it is quite dense. It's quite sweet and very silky, but the wood gives another texture. It's like when you're creating a dish and you want, if everything was the same kind of mushy texture, it would be a little bit uninteresting. You kind of need something crispy or something, just with another texture in it to lift the flavor experience. Both the nose and the palette also really remind me of a Dunnage Warehouse. It's this kind of, I don't know if it's, because in a Dunnage Warehouse, usually if you smell alcohol and it's just alcohol, like if you smell vodka perhaps, it's not that I will go, oh wow, I love the scent of alcohol. But if you go into a Dunnage Warehouse, there, I don't know if I'm just being a little bit sentimental or I mean, I'm a, I'm a true romantic at heart, so this is where my kind of descriptions come from. But it almost feels like there's something in the air. It's this kind of mixture of cold, a little bit damp. There's alcohol in the air, there's the wood, there's the history, there's just this experience. It's a little bit darker, it's quite cold. You know how much I like the cold. Everything comes together. Yeah, and it's almost a bit magical, that as well. I think... Yeah, this just makes me think of that. It's not the sense of alcohol. It's just this kind of Dunnage Warehouse magical vibe. That I think a lot of people, I mean, I don't know what it's like when you have the, the chance to work in a Dunnage Warehouse. It's probably your kind of everyday environment. But for people that might be visiting distilleries only uh, maybe once a year or once every second or third year when you're at, on a distillery trip, it is something magical about going into the warehouses. Because when you're in there and it's just so quiet, you also kind of realize that even though you might only be in there for 10 minutes, five minutes, those casts has to be there in, in there for at least three years. And this has been in there for 25 years. This might be older than me. I'm 25. Things like that just kind of <laughs> blow my mind a little bit and makes me realize how much respect I have for the whiskey industry and the spirits industry. It just takes so much work. I think this reminds me of the 12, but amplified and then you kind of just round off the edges. So it's this kind of rich flavor without the kind of youthful aliveness of the 12, but instead it has this very rich kind of dense fruitiness about it. It's, I think if you've tried older spirits, you might know what I mean by this kind of well-rounded fruitiness, because it's something I've found in other whiskies that I've tried as well. I'm just trying to think of which ones I've tried that have been this age. But I think one of the ones was the Aberfeldy 40 had a similar well-rounded fruitiness to it. And now that you, the, the fruit is still there, but the more you taste it, the more you can actually taste the other aromas that are hiding behind as well. And there's definitely a fudgy note in this one. I think because the woodiness has a little bit of a drying sensation, it feels more like fudge in this Bunnahaven, because I think on the 12, it almost feels a more a little bit more caramelly or honey-esque but I haven't tried the 12 for a few months so it's gonna be so interesting to try this next to the other range. I think what we're gonna try is the, the 12, the 18, the 25, the Toy Chekaga and the Stewardur. So yeah, I mean do you have a favourite already? Please let me know in the comments below and please let me know your thoughts on the Buna Haven 25. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What are your thoughts? 
And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I'd be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links the next time you're shopping with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange, or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All that information is, of course, as usual, in the little description here below, as well as the links to my other channels if you're curious about that. As always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing and I'm so grateful I have your support. Of course, because November is coming around and I will soon go back to working a little bit more, we are going to make some changes. I probably won't be able to post every day here on YouTube, even though I would love to. I just don't have the time. But thanks to my Patreons, we have kind of agreed on a few days that uh, you're gonna see videos for sure but if I have extra time and some interesting whiskies I'm gonna try my best to post as much as I possibly can but if you want to have your input and perhaps get some extra content then check my patreon out as well but I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slangeva, skål!